Hey, did Jerry call him? Not yet. Well, we are holding the front page 20 minutes, and I'll just wait that long, and no longer. Say, you mean about the girl's suicide at the Legion Apartment? Yes, and in case we muffled you, get something hot. Say, I got something red hot. All about that evangelist having a baby. All right, spend a couple of calls if you like. Copy boy. Yeah, city this. Copy boy. Who oh, is that you, Jerry? Well, where in the... Oh, you got the story, eh? Yes. Get over here just as fast as you can with them. Uh, uh, no, no, no. Uh, wait a minute. Uh, you better give us something to start working on. Uh, dictate about 300 words. Hey, Spud. Okay, Chief. Uh, take Jerry on 16. Take some stuff on that girl's suicide. Oh. Boy. Copy that. Yeah, take these in the bird. Hi, Jerry. Boy. Spud. Boy. Shoot. Okay. Boy. Boy. Copy. Boy. Copy. Oh, no, 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 not A.H. Smith, no, J, J.H. J, like in, uh, juniper berries. Yes, that's right. Will you tell Ferris I'll be right in? It's a whale of a big story. Will you save me a couple of columns? Bye. Uh, Mr. Smith's outside and wants to see you immediately. Well, send him in. Yes, sir. Well, the returning prodigal. Hello, Bryce. What? Only hello on a nice bright day like this? Well, I'm in a terrific hurry. Oh, gee, you look like a million in that getup. Well, thank you, mister. Say, I heard you fell on a great story. Fell on it? Listen, I dug that up with my own little hatchet. And is it swell? Love Nest Suicide. I've got pictures and everything exclusive. No. And if that doesn't get my salary boosted, oh, Bryce, it's the first big scoop I've ever had. I'm just thrilled to death. <laughs> you look like two million now, all pepped up like that. Say, how about a couple of steaks tonight to celebrate? I'll bring them if you broil them. Okay. I hope you get your raise. Oh, listen, you want to borrow the price of those steaks? Yeah, that wouldn't be a bad idea. I'll get the steaks. <laughs> All right, I'll bring them raise. Bye. Yeah. Yeah. Say, Hank, I got the whole works. I beat everybody to it, including the police. Uh, wait a moment. Uh, come over in the corner. Secret? Woo. Yeah. Here's a picture of the girl that killed herself. And here's a Romeo. He certainly was a dirty rat. Listen to this. I'm through with you, and you might as well know it. If you want to kill yourself, go ahead and do it. How do you like that? It's a swell story, huh? Well, what's the matter? Jerry, why didn't you tell me the man in this affair was John H. Smith? Why, what difference would it make? I know it's going to hit you pretty hard. And I feel like tearing things apart myself. Your story is dead. Dead? I've just come from Barman's office. He killed my story? Where are you going? I'm going to see Barman. No, 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 you get fired. Not before I tell him what I think of him. Young woman, who are you? I'm the reporter who turned in that girl's suicide story, and I'm telling her what I think of you for not printing it. Well, we can't print every story turned in by an irresponsible reporter. No. You go to the cashier and get your money. You're discharged. I resigned just before I came in here. Copy, boy. Copy. Copy, boy. Better open that door, young lady, or I'll break it down. Who is it? Me, with the eats. Well, you came early, didn't you? You'll have to wait now until I call. Don't come in. All right, you well, better hurry up and open up. All right, come on in. Well, go ahead. I know what you're going to say. You're going to bawl me out, I suppose, for what I said to Barman. I should say I am. You probably got your stop by now. You know, he controls every sheet in town. Oh, I guess I'm a fool, but I was so mad. I've got to get a drop somewhere. I've just got to. Well, if you'd only listen to reason, why, you wouldn't have to worry about looking for a job. Oh, we've been all over that. Yeah, I know we have. I suppose it is a cockeyed idea. Oh, Bryce. Darling, I like you better than any man I ever met. But I 
don't want to get married and just sit down and do nothing. You better tell me what gates I crash in the morning. Are you really determined to keep on your own? You bet I am. Then I guess I'd better give you some free advice. Ah, huh. what? Now, on a small paper, you'd shine like the seat of a pair of serge pants. Why don't you hit a small town? A small town? Me? Yeah, I know a man by the name of Webster who runs a paper out in Apex, California. That's where I was born. Oh. I can probably get you the job as society editor or something like that, just as a starter. Me? Do society on a small paper in Apex, California? <laughs> I'm a swell newspaper man, and I know it. Oh, yeah? <laughs> what you got? Oh, uh, some bread. Bread? Hmm. Is that all you brought? I hope you got it sliced. <laughs> what kind of a town is this, uh, Apex? Hmm? Oh, it's all right if you like small towns. I mean, you know, I'd be willing to take a, an editor's job on a country paper. Why don't you worry him? I'm on my way. Oh, you would, huh? <laughs> well, I told you before, he wanted a man. Well, just worry him that uh, Jerry Hansen is coming, see? And then I'll take care of the rest. Yeah, and the minute you got there, he'd throw you right smack out on your ear. Well, be my ear. <laughs> God, have you got those peas open I here? Just a little thing. Tell me more about this little town where you were born. Oh, well, it's, according to the Chamber of Commerce, the population is about 8,000, but I think that includes m mules and one-eyed jacks. Oh, what Bryce, will you, <laughs> will you be serious? I, I mean, who, who are the principal citizens, things like that? Well, there's only one that I know of, and that's my esteemed uncle, Mr. Martin Blake. He's the president of the uh, Apex National Bank. And he's hard-boiled and has no sympathy whatsoever for widows, children, or newspaper editors. Oh, sounds like a nice man. Here, when you get those open, you can put them in there. What's the uh, owner of the paper like? Is this the advocate office? Well, sure. Don't you see the sign? Well, I hoped it was a typographical error. Huh? Oh, no. It's been there for 35 years. Is there something I can do for you? Well, I wanted to see Mr. Webster. Well, uh, if you have a piece for the paper, I'm the society editor. No, it's business. Oh, I, uh, I guess you can see him. He's in his office. Mr. Webster, there's somebody to see you. Oh. Uh, won't you come in? Uh, you want to see me, young lady? Uh, won't you sit down? Thank you. can I do for you? Well, Mr. Webster, I'm Miss Hampton. Hampton? <laughs> I'm afraid I don't just recall the name. Why well, didn't Bryce Regal wire you that I was coming? 
Jerry Hampton? Jerry Hampton? Why, yes, about the editorship, you know. Oh, well, why, 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 you were a girl. But didn't he tell you and his wife? No. No, he might have known I wouldn't want a girl around here. I'll, uh, I'll give you a check for your expenses. I suppose you wouldn't consider employing a woman even though she were the best editor in the world. <laughs> Who says you're the best editor in the world? I do. Well, that certainly is interesting. Uh, no. No, you are too pretty to be smart. I'd like that a lot if I weren't looking for a job. I think I know why you want an editor. They're drilling for oil around here, and if the wells come in, you'll have a boom town. I don't put much stock in that oil well. No, just a wildcat. Hundred to one, they won't hit oil. You want an editor anyway, don't you? Well, I... I'm about ready to quit. I'm old and I'm tired. And I wanted a young fella to come out here and take the burden off of me. Of course, that's why I can't have a girl around here. Uh, how much were your expenses? I don't want expense money. I want a job. I told you I can run a newspaper and so is Bryce Regal. Now, being a girl is just an accident that I can't help. But I'm here and ready to go to work. Now, do I get the job or not? Well, now... Think twice before you speak. Because if you say anything but yes, the best editor you ever saw is going to walk right out of this office and never come back. <laughs> Shake. You're going to be the editor for one month anyway. And the salary is $35 a week, okay? Thanks a lot. A month is plenty of time to prove that you can't possibly get along without me. <laughs> You've got determination, Jerry. And that's half the newspaper business. Uh, come on outside and I'll introduce you to your staff. Now, this is your staff. Uh, uh, Mrs. Mellon. Uh, I, I want you to meet your new editor. This is Jerry Hampton. And uh, Mrs. Mellon is the uh, society editor. Now, how do you do? And, uh, uh, Ash. Yes? I want you to meet your new editor. This is Ash. He is the uh, advertising department. Oh. And, uh, this is... Where's Bill? Oh, uh, a uh, bill. Uh, bill. Yeah, come here, Bill. I want you to meet your new editor. Uh, this is Bill Giddings. He runs the sports department and edits a column called Over the Transom. <laughs> Are there many transoms in Apex? Well, I must say that most of them have been nailed shut since I started my column. Did you say the name was Giddy? No. No. The name, that's, that's how I am. Oh. The name is uh, Giddings. Giddings, uh, as in the flight of a bumblebee. As, uh, oh, <laughs> you, you wash windows in between times. <laughs> oh, well, I don't know. I just sort of do that... that Kind of helps keep my figure, <laughs> if I'm not boasting. See, I, I play croquet, Captain, and I feel I don't get quite enough exercise. Oh, yes. Well, I should think if your column was hot enough, it'd keep you busy running from the people you write about. Hot? My column? Oh, for heaven's sake. Just uh, draw up a chair, and I will give you a sample. Now... What well-known paper hanger is running around with what cute little blonde? <laughs> Just mull that around a bit. Try and guess that one. Well, I was never very good at riddles. You'd better tell me. Well, it's his wife's baby. <laughs> oh, good. You get it? <laughs> oh, good, yes. Huh? I've heard words, but I don't remember where. Yeah. Well, 
speaking of New York, if they ever hear about me in New York, oh, oh they'll send for me. Right. Why, they're all asleep there. They've no idea that newspaper men are born and not made. Oh, I'll say newspaper men are born. Some of them prematurely. Now, I myself, I am an incubator baby. No. Oh, did you, did you say the name was Giddings? No, no. Giddings. Z Mr. Webster, I think you have a very efficient staff. I don't see any reason why we shouldn't make a great success of the advocate. I'll talk to you about some changes in the makeup. I'll uh, use a banner, and we'll get in some two-column heads. Will you see what else you can find? Sure, Miss Hampton. I'll run through and see what display type I can dig up. All right. Thanks, Luke. But the name is Jerry. All right, Jerry. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> Good night, Luke. Good night. I guess you might as well know all about this town. You know, I think Martin Blake lent his name to that oil well just to sell stock. But nearly everyone I've talked to has money in it. Ah, that's the point. If Blake thought there was the slightest chance of hitting oil, he'd have gobbled up all that stock himself. Well, if you have no faith in the well, then... Well, just what is the attitude of the paper toward it? Well, you see, I owe Blake some money. Oh. And uh, I can't afford to antagonize him. He's uh, kind of got a mortgage on this place here. Well, here I am, right up to my neck in a movie. Mortgage on the old homestead and everything. Yeah. Honest publisher faces ruin and his children are starving. Well, but I'm not married. But your children are starving anyway. Huh? All hope is lost. There's nothing left but the river. Do you know what happened? What? What? The bright young female editor yeah. runs up the circulation, uh -huh. fills the paper with advertising. Yes. The publisher is able to pay off the banker and tell him to go to hell. <laughs> <laughs> oh, say, that's a plenty. That is it. Say, you've earned your salary already. <laughs> I haven't lived like this for four or five years. <laughs> well, I think I'll go home and get some sleep so I can pitch in tomorrow. Uh -huh. You know, I think I'm going to like it here a lot. Well, I hope you do, Jerry. Well, this is certainly going to start some row. What's going to start a row? Well, this story about Arthur Young's divorce. What's wrong with it? Oh, nothing. Only he's Nate Young's brother, and Nate Young owns the White Front Department Store. You may not know it, but his advertising just about keeps this sheet alive. Well, you just leave the advertisers to me, will you? Say, when I go out and drum up a, a little business, all I get's a poke in the eye with a dirty stick. Nobody can say anything like that about a member of my family and get away with it. Say, where is this Jerry Hampton? You tell him that Nathan Young wants to talk to him. Would you kindly step into the editorial office? Just what was it you wanted to talk about? My business is with Jerry Hampton, miss. And I don't want to talk to you about it. Well, I'm afraid you'll have to. You see, I'm Jerry Hampton. Who, you? You, Jerry Hampton? My, my. What busy businessman is ready to slay what newspaper editor? Hot news. Hot news. A 
I'm just going in to get a cigar. Don't wait for me. Oh, hello, hello Sam. Hello, Mark. Have a cigar? No, thanks. I'm just going in to get one. Yeah. Oh, by the way, uh, this uh, new editor of yours, you think it's wise to increase your expenses? Well, I've been kind of getting ready for that oil well when it comes in, Mark. Apex is going to boom, and I don't want to miss any tricks. No, I've told everybody in this town that that well is just a gamble. They all seem to think they're going to be millionaires. Well, I suppose they think anything that you're in, Mark, can't be much of a gamble. <laughs> uh, this editor, the, uh, he's a young fellow, isn't he? Uh, 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 yes, yes, kind of young, kind of young. Knows all about newspaper business. Made a lot of improvements on the paper already. Yes, I've noticed that. Yeah, well, I've got to be toddling along. So long, Mark. Goodbye, Sam. Well, being a woman doesn't excuse you from printing objectionable articles about a member of my family. Oh, you mean your brother's divorce? You had no right to print anything about my family's affairs or experiences without my personal permission. Mr. Young, do you think I'm going to let you run this paper for me? Nate Young came in loaded for bear. She took him into a private office. You'd better hurry in there before she loses the biggest advertiser for well, you. Well, what's it all about? Arthur Young's divorce. I'm sorry, but I can't see things your way. Well, if that's your attitude, you'll never get another cent's worth of advertising from me. Well, this really simplifies matters. You see, up to now, we haven't accepted any mail order advertising. Because we don't like to see money spent outside of Apex. It isn't good for local business. Of course, a newspaper has to have advertising to live. Oh, Giddy. She means me. Right here, Miss Hampton. Would you wire me a Starbucks that it's okay to send copies of their ad? Have Ash wire me a Starbucks, dear, Ma Buck? <laughs> Whatever it is, they shall be wired. Send a wire to me or stop. Send a wire. Say, is Mears and Starbucks going to advertise in this town? Well, you just heard me accept their order. Oh, that'll never do. Why, that'll cut into my business. I can't stand mail order competition. Send a wire to Beers and Marstock. What about? Uh, well, as a matter of fact, it slipped my mind. I'll find out. Anyway, I haven't definitely decided to take my advertising away from the paper yet. Besides, I, I think you ought to give me a chance to sort of change my mind. Well, you see, you only run a quarter of a page every other day, and what the smallest mail order contract would be several full pages a week. Say, if Mears and Starbucks thinks this town is worth that much to them, it's worth that much to me. Uh, of course, without any mail order competition. Well, I don't know. Oh, come on now. G give us a chance. A home, home people, you know. Please, give us a chance. You know, I, I, I might make it a little bit more. Well, I'll, I'll see Mr. Webster, but I think that'll be fine, Mr. Young. Yes, all right, all right. We have it in on tomorrow's issue. Well, we're trying for a month anyway. Well, it's a real pleasure to have met you, Miss Hampton. I'll bring over the copy for the first page tomorrow, and uh, maybe you can offer some suggestions. Well, I'll try. Thank you. Thank you very much. Goodbye. 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 Say, never mind about that wire, Giddy. Oh, yes, yeah, of course. Well, we won't have to worry about Mr. Nathan Young anymore. Jerry, if you'd have lost Nate's advertising, we couldn't have kept on putting out the paper. Well, we won't stop for a couple of weeks anyway. Printer, that to the loan to Mr. Webster. Yes, sir. Well, Sam, I'm glad to see you're catching up with your back payments. Yeah, so am I. <laughs> They tell me this new girl editor of yours is pretty smart. Smart? Say, she's just like that. Why, in less than six months, I'll have you all paid off and out of debt. Well, that'll be a novelty. Yeah, won't it? 
And say, did you hear about Nate Young coming into the office to beat her up before he knew she was a girl? <laughs> yes, yes, I know all about it. Yeah, you do? Who told you? You did. Last time you were in. Oh. And three times before that. Oh. And I also know that Minerva Bryce sent her down from the city. Oh. You told me that at least ten times. Yeah. <clears throat> well, I guess I'll be going. <laughs> So she had an argument with Nate Young, eh? Tried to teach him a lesson. Yeah. N now he's trying to teach her a lesson. <laughs> oh. Yeah, just took her for an auto ride. <laughs> so long, Mark. Uh, Grigley, get me a complete statement of Webster's account showing the amount of his payments and the balance he still owes. Yes, sir. Uh, and also a complete list of his bank deposits since he got his new editor. Yes, Mr. Blake. Now, right down there, that's where my great-grandfather's cabin stood in pioneer days. Or oh, they fought Indians all around here. Indians? Oh, yes, yeah. And right here where we are now, on this very hill, this is where a, where a stockade stood. Oh, not this hill. This very hill. Well, really? Mm-hmm. And uh, in one battle here, my great aunt, Libby Rogers, she shot six Indians herself. Then she scalped them. What? She scalped all six of them? All six of them. Well... We had the scalps in the family when I was little, but the moors got into them and all the hair fell out. Oh, what a misfortune. It sure was. Gee, I wish I could have shown them to you. I'd love to have seen them. Oh, Nate, I've got to be getting back to the office if I'm going to get a paper out today. Well, who was that? That was John Levings from over at the oil well. Another couple of inches and he'd have hit me. Well, let's go, Nate. Sure, bet. Thanks for the ride, Nate, and all the information. I feel almost like a pioneer now myself. You know, I was going to ask you a question today, but I... <laughs> I just couldn't get up my nerve. Well, please don't ask me anything I'd have to say no to, will you? I guess I wouldn't have much of a chance anyway. Goodbye. Goodbye, Nate. I'm so glad to see you. I'm glad to see you, too. You don't know how I miss you. How's Spud and Hank and oh, all of them? Oh, never them. mind that. I want to talk about you. Listen, come on in and give me a lowdown on everything. Right. We just got time for a little... Sit down. Oh, you, you're real, aren't you, darling? I'm not just dreaming or anything. <laughs> well, if you don't believe I'm alive, just piss me and see if I don't wake up. Oh, no, that's so well. Oh, well, <laughs> How's Sam and... Oh, everything's wonderful. I've run up the circulation, nearly 800. Most of it in the last two weeks. Mm -hmm. And nearly twice as much advertising. Can you imagine the kick I get out of seeing it grow and realizing I'm doing it all by myself? Oh, I'll bet Sam's tickled to death. Tickled? Well, you should have seen him when I first came here. He was tired and ready to quit. And then to see him wake up and take an interest in things. And to realize I'm responsible for that, too. You know, he wanted a newspaper. And I'm giving it to him. I love that old man, Bryce. That a girl, I knew you could do it. Hello there, Sam. Hello, Ed. How, How are you? How's the okay. boy? <laughs> I thought you were coming back and asked me to marry you. Not that I would. Well, I swan. Sam. Uh, well, why didn't you let a fellow know so we could have got out the band? Well, I didn't know it myself. It just came. Oh, come on. <laughs> sit down, sit down. <laughs> George, it's great to see you again, Sam. Yeah, great to see me again. Yeah, I guess this is what you've come to see. <laughs> well, <laughs> maybe. I wouldn't say. Hey, has she told you what had happened? What happened? Well, she's been bragging a lot. I don't know how much of it's true. <laughs> oh, say, she's the smartest thing this side of anywhere. Is that so? Well, she doesn't look so intelligent to me. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I want to see Miss Hampton. Say I'll only keep her a minute. I'll see if she's busy. The name is Levings? That's right, John Levings. 
Oh, would you pardon me just a minute? Ed, tell me, how's old New York? You want to see me? I just dropped in to give you a little news. We've closed down the well. We didn't find any oil. You mean the well has failed? I'm afraid that's right. Well, this is very important news. Would you come in and give me a full report? I haven't time right now, but here's a statement. It will explain everything. But I'd like an interview. Lots of people in town have money invested. You see, this is of vital importance. It's all in there. I'm sorry I can't stop now. Later, perhaps. Oh, but Mr. Levings, I... I'm sorry. Did he say the oil well had failed? Yes. Oh. Oh. What? Oh. Did you have money in it? I put in all my savings. Every cent. <laughs> so did the maid oh. at the hotel and the station oh. taxi driver. And a lot of others that couldn't afford to lose. Oh. Oh, why don't you go home and rest a while? Try not to think too much about it. And don't say anything to anyone until I know more. If you say so. Oh. All right, 630. Oh, you dated up for dinner tonight at Uncle Maude's, so you better run home and put on that other dress. Oh, I can't go to dinner tonight. Why? The oil well failed. Failed? Yes, they're closing down. This is a statement that Levings just left me. Oil well? Yes, on West Hill. Your uncle was interested in it. Well, if he had any money in it, he'll probably kill himself. He's such a good loser. I think I will accept that dinner invitation. I might be able to get a statement from your uncle about the well. A statement? No, it's the free feed you're looking for. What time is dinner? 6.30, and you better not be late. All right, you call for me at the hotel at 6. Now get out and let me get some work done. Oh, the real newspaper editor, huh? Goodbye. Goodbye. There's, there's something funny about this. Funny? Oh, Bryce. Have a cigar. What? Only one? You know, I don't know when I've enjoyed a dinner more. I've been having my meals in hotels and cafes, it seems, for ages. <laughs> she means hash houses and beaneries. <laughs> that word cafe is something she's picked up since he's been an editor. <laughs> I must say that you don't look old enough to be the editor of a newspaper. Well, it seems to me as if you ought to be playing with paper dolls. Well, don't let appearances deceive you, Uncle Mart. You'll pull back her hair just a little bit. You'll notice a scar where she had her face lifted. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> sugar, Miss Hampton. Yes, one, please. Four for me. Not four lumps. Now, look here, Aunt Emma. I know people who don't take any sugar at all, and I never raise a howl about it. But the minute I ask for four, everybody goes into spasms and things. <laughs> I should think they would. <laughs> oh, just to prove that I'm a sure enough editor, will you give me an interview? Uh, uh what about? Mr. Levings was in today about the oil well. Mm. Yes, yes. Uh, this was very unfortunate. You know, if Levings really had struck oil, it would have been a big thing for Apex. Of course, that was my real reason for becoming connected with the project. Well, just what was your connection with it? That is, if you don't mind. Oh, no, 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 not at all. I was merely the banker who was handling the funds that some Eastern people had put into it. Of course, I had some money of my own invested, but I could afford to lose that. Mr. Levings left a statement at the office today. Of course, you read it. Uh, no, no. He came into the bank yesterday to ask my advice, and I told him to take the bull by the horns, to give the news to your paper. Levings is the responsible party. He's in charge of everything. And now, if, you, if you'll excuse me. It's a wonderful old painting. Oh, yes, yes. It's been in the family for a good many years. Is the uh, interview over? Well, there's just one question I hesitate about asking. Quite a number of people bought stock in the company. Some, I suppose, because you were connected with it. I wondered if, if you might 
have something to say to them. I've been wondering whether I couldn't take over that stock for part of its purchase price so that the stockholders won't lose all of their investment. Well, I think that's splendid. May I print what you just said? Oh, well, not, not just yet. No, I must have time to think it over. Oh, of course. Oh, gracious, I must get back to the office. Uh, Bryce, would you get my wrap? I'm sorry to have to eat and run, but I'm a working girl. <laughs> well, you're not going to work tonight. Well, the Bayfax is to have a paper in the morning. Well, well I you, always Bryce. say, early to bed, early to rise. Now, don't give her that kind of advice. She's wise enough now with the sleep that she gets. <laughs> <laughs> well, you must come again real soon. Good night. Good night. <laughs> well, thanks so much for the interview. May I say that you're trying to work out a way to save some of the loss? Well, uh, I, uh, I don't suppose it will do any harm. Oh, thanks so much for everything. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, Good night folks. Good night. But please don't come in. I'll never get any work done. But Jerry, I haven't seen you but a minute tonight. You know, I didn't realize how I'd fallen for you until after you'd gone away. What I should have done is drag you down to that license bureau the day you got fired. I've got a lot to do. Yes, I forgot I was holding up the parade. Well, good luck on the story. Thanks, Bryce. I mean that. Good night. Good night. New York calling. Hello. Hello. Oh, my, my, my. What's the matter? Did I frighten you, Kitty? <laughs> no, the name is not Giddy. I it's know. It's spelt with a zing, like in wasp. Yeah. Well, oh, speaking of wasps, now, wait a minute. Wait till the folks in the morning get a load of this. Listen. What big chiseler spent all afternoon with a certain young widow? Know the answer? No. You better tell me, though, so I won't stay awake all night. <laughs> the guy who makes tombstones. Oh, you idiot. Well, it's an idea, you know. I'm hard-pressed for work. Sometimes you... <sighs> Say most anything to fill up space. Oh. I'm so glad you're here. Well, what's the matter? Anything wrong? Listen, tell me. Would Martin Blake buy back stock in that oil company just to do the people in this town a good turn? Blake buy back stock? Why? Yes, I mean, would he take back worthless stock at any figure just to keep the investors in that company from losing everything? Not if I know Martin Blake. Uh-huh. He almost had me fooled tonight. That well isn't a failure. What? They've struck oil. Struck oil, are you sure? Yes. And they're trying to pull a raw deal on all the people that put money into it. Main, 127. I was out at the well this afternoon. Hello, Palace Hotel? Well, would you ring Mr. Levings' room, please? Uh, now, Jerry, don't do anything to antagonize Blake. I haven't told I've you. I've got Blake's number, too. Hello. Oh, Mr. Levings. Mr. Levings, this is Miss Hampton of The Advocate. It's very important that you come over to the office right away. Now, Jerry. It is important. I'm afraid I can't tell you over the phone. Well, I'm sure you'd much rather have me explain it to you personally. But well, thanks a lot. I can expect you? Fine. Oh, now, Jerry. Don't you worry. I'm not going to fumble this. I've gotten away with a good deal so far, haven't I? Yes, you sure have, Jerry. All right, I'm going to tie this all right on Mr. Levings with a nice little bow. Oh, I've got to get Nate Young over here. A main, 282. Sure, you haven't made that too strong. Oh, no, it's all right. There he is now. What's this all about, Miss Hampton? Oh, won't you come in? Sit down. Well, I haven't got much time. Oh, I think you'll be much more comfortable sitting. Well, what is it? I'm going to give you a chance to change that statement you gave me about the oil well. Change it? You said the well was a failure. 
What do you mean by that? I was out to the well this afternoon. I started to light a cigarette and one of your laborers nearly fainted. Just what are you getting at? There were gas bubbles in the pump. And the pumps were going. That means you were mudding down the pressure to keep the well from blowing in. That well is a failure and we're going to close it down. Mr. Levings, I was born practically under an oil well in Pennsylvania. First thing I smelled when I came into the world was crude oil. But never anything as crude as this. Don't you think you'd better admit it? I won't admit anything. That well is a failure. Just a moment, please. I was talking to the farmers today out at the well and found you'd been buying up land in your own name. You've been double-crossing everybody, including Martin Blake. Double-crossing him? Why, Martin Blake... Oh, don't say anything you'll be sorry for. This is the headline we intend running on the paper tomorrow. Now, you don't have to admit anything if you don't want to. But this is the banner line for the advocate tomorrow morning. I'm giving you a chance to change your statement. Either that, or we print this truth in your statement, too. I came as soon as I could. Oh, Nate, would you tell Mr. Levings what we saw at the Orwell today? Sure. Right on the spot where my granduncle, Jeremiah Young, was surrounded by a band now of 30 Indians... Nate, that... please, about the well. Well, if anybody tells you that that well is a failure... All right. What do you want? Just a statement of what you think the output will be and when you'll start swabbing. I'll see Blake. Oh, Bill, file a hundred words to the Associated Press. Tell them we've struck oil here and that Martin Blake, prominent Apex banker, is interested in the company. Oh, boy, I'm... Do you realize you're worth a hundred thousand dollars? Well, I don't care. Well, listen, I don't all care that money, for the money. Why, you'll get used to it. You'll, you'll well, no, I won't. The, all these you servants only, and all this money frighten you've me. You've only got a few years to live and just well, but I want to live them happy. Do. I don't want to live in that big house. Oh, I want to do my own washing, my you. own cooking, and my own ironing and everything. Jimmy! Yes, Mom? Don't play with them kids. Their family don't own no oil stuff. You come up here. Here your correction, and I wish you'd speed up on everything. We'll have to print 12 pages today. Can't make it. I've got everybody sweating now. Why, that old press is stuck together with chewing gum. She laid down on me five times last night. Well, we'll just have to make Mr. Webster get some new equipment somehow. Well, Do the best you can, won't you? Yes, miss. Hey, how you making on that? That's good. Good. Huh? Well, you cut down everything. The press room's swamped. How'd you make out with Sam? Oh, he just keeps saying that he won't bite off more than he can chew. I think he's still afraid to take a chance. Well, how does he expect to get a newspaper out if he hasn't got the proper equipment? Okay, I'll cut out all I can.
Well, here you are. Everything cut to the eyelashes. I hope you like them. Oh, you're sweet, Bryce. To stay here and help me when you ought to be back on your own job. You know why I am staying, don't you? I know, darling, but... You know, when I get married, I want a home and I want to stay in it. And I want to be the one to get you that home for you to stay in. Yes, sweet. Everything's going fine, isn't it? <laughs> Hiya, Sam. Oh, Mr. Webster, I've got to talk to you about getting more equipment for the office. Oh, well, what's the matter? Maybe you'd better come in my office a minute. What? Are you ill? No. No, I'm all right. Lose the advocate? How? Blake's taking it over. Blake? I just come from the bank. That's why I didn't want to spend any more money on equipment. I, I was trying to pay him off. But he can't take your paper without going to court, no matter how much you owe him. Don't you worry. We'll raise the money. Oh, yes, he can. He can take it all right. It belongs to him. Belongs to him? Well, you see, when I had to have more money to keep going, Blake made me give him a bill of sale for everything here, and I've been kind of paying him back. But you'll be all right. I'll be all right. Yeah, he told me to tell you that he, he wanted you to keep on working for him. As if I'd work for him. Why, I'd starve to death first. Well, he'll give you everything you want. You won't have to worry about equipment. And don't you worry about me. I'll be all right. Why, I've been kind of wanting to retire right along. But I, I didn't want to lose my paper. I kind of wanted to just sit back and watch you make things hum. <laughs> oh, if I only had some proof that he knew about that oil well. Wait. Listen, Bryce. Something terrible has happened. You've got to help me. What is it? Your uncle intends to take the advocate away from Mr. Webster. Oh, sure, I knew about it. You... You knew it? Yeah, I intend to telling you about it. It'll be a great break for you. Uncle Mark said he's going to put in cylinder presses right away. And at least an AP wire. Well, you'll be an editor of a real newspaper. Oh, listen, Bryce. Sam Webster's nursed his paper along for 30 years. And to lose it now, just when it's about to amount to something, what? Don't you understand what that'll mean to him? Oh, Sam will be all right. Uncle Mart will take care of him. You think he'd want anybody to take care of him? Listen, dear, aren't you letting sentiment run away with you? Sam isn't going to suffer at all, and Uncle Mart is within his rights. He's offered me the job of managing the paper, and he wants you to continue as the editor. Now, ain't that something? I didn't know that. Well, that's what I was going to tell you right along. Isn't that a great break of luck? You and I can be married. Yes, we could, couldn't we? Oh, I'm sorry, dear. I know you care an awful lot about Sam. So do I. Listen, but... I'm going to tell you something. Your uncle knew that Levings had struck oil the night we went there for dinner. He was mixed up in Levings' oil well scheme, and now he's trying to free Sam out of the advocate. Oh, now, that's a wild idea. You're just excited about everything. Huh? <laughs> Won't you please speak to your uncle? What good would it do?
Listen, Jerry, honey. This means everything to you and me, a big future. Why, together we can make the advocate the biggest paper in the West. I... I can't leave Sam now. Not when he needs me. Oh, you've been sweet helping me. And good luck when you take over the management. Please tell your uncle that I couldn't continue as editor under any circumstances. Jerry, do you mean that? We just... We just don't see things the same way. I'll be leaving the day you... He takes over the paper. All right. That's the way you feel about it. All right. Do you know who that is? No. Why, that's Mrs. Mellon. She's made over $100,000 on Earl. Oh, uh, you may return to me at the usual time, Carlton. Yes, ma'am. How do you do, Mr. Jones? Uh, how do you and do, Mary, how are you? <laughs> no, sir, I won't have you later. How are you? Never mind, lady. I want you to read my statement. The lady's next. The lady's next. I want to change my address. I'm moving to my new house tomorrow. I've got three wells in my property, and they're sinking another one next week. Yeah, well, I've only got two wells on my property, but I'm drawing down 5,000 a day. I should worry. Didn't you have any sort of written agreement about your right to buy the paper back again? Well, Blake dictated and I had to accept or go into bankruptcy and that had left my creditors holding the bag. Isn't there anything we can do? I'm afraid not. Blake doesn't make many mistakes when he goes into anything. I guess you'll be in to take over everything tomorrow. Well, there's no use crying over spilt milk. I'm awful sorry about this, Sam, but I don't see a single thing you can do about it. Hello, Negro boy. How are you? Glad Hello, to see you. Yes, Sam, in an awful hurry. Yeah. Come well, in the store sometime. Come in the store. All right, I'll do. <laughs> How much is this going to cost me? Well, let me add it up and see. Come in. Oh, Nate, I'm awfully busy. Jerry, I don't like to disturb you, but this is awfully important. At oh. least to me. What is it? Jerry? You know that my family's been right here ever since this town was started, I long before. I know. This soil is bathed in their blood plus that of the Indians. Sure. Why, my great-grand-uncle, Lemuel Young, was the first one to start Listen, a store here. Will you here. leave out it was the a family history and come to the point? Well, I might have to sell my store. You, you might have to sell. Yeah. Is Martin Blake trying to buy you out, too? Martin Blake? Yes. Why, I never thought of him. But this man I mean is stopping over at Martin Blake's house. He came into my store last week and he made me an offer and I refused it. And then he came in today and he threatened to build right next door to me and then to sell me until he forced me out of business if I didn't accept his terms. Oh, Nate, for Pete's sakes, who came into town? Who's trying to buy you out? What is it? Why, John H. Smith. 
Who? Who? John H. Smith, the big chain store man. He came from Apex originally, only he didn't come from one of their old families. He's mixed up with Blake in this oil well, and I think Levings is his brother-in-law. John H. Smith is mixed up with Blake in the oil wells. He's put money up yeah. behind it. Yeah. And Levings is his brother-in-law. Yeah. Oh, Nate. Nate. This is a chance. Chance for what? Oh, if I can only swing this. Swing what? Oh, Nate, you wait. You wait here a minute. What? Uh. Luke, put this in a seven-column banner head and set it 12-point black face right away. I'll give you some more copy in a minute. We're getting out an extra. Get ready for an extra, boys. Hurry up, Thug. Get that banner head 12-point black face quick. Listen, make this snappy, boys. Be as important as you can about it. We've got to get this out. Get a load of this. What's happened? Plenty. My name in it? No. I'm the goat. Listen to this. Levings claimed well failure after striking oil. Driller made false statement to advocate. After four months continuous drilling, I have reported to the directors of the Apex Oil Company that in my opinion, based upon 15 years' experience in the oil business, that this project is a failure. Well, that can't do any real harm if it doesn't mention Blake or me. It can't, eh? Well, it makes me out a crook to everybody in this town and a fool besides. Extra. Is Mr. Blake at home? Oh, yes, Extra. miss. He's in the living room. Extra. Extra. What is it you want coming here? I want to see Mr. Smith, among other things. Did you ever write a letter that began like this? I'm through with you and you might as well know it. If you want to kill yourself, go ahead and do it. What are you driving at? Sounds familiar, doesn't it? Well, uh... explain what you mean by coming here like this. Keep your hands to yourself, Blake. I think Mr. Smith knows what I mean. I was a reporter who turned in the story of Maud Pinnell's death. You had Ike Baum and kill it. But maybe you didn't get all your letters back. I think, Mr. Blake, that you'll be interested in this, too. This is the proof of the second extra we intend running tonight. Here you are. And when you get that set, come back for another armful. Here's yours. And I wish every one of you was twins. Nate, you'd better read it to them. I don't imagine they're seeing any too well. Smith, chain store magnet, named in girl's death. Girl advised in heartless letters to take own life. Give me that lock of furniture. Now read the headlines about Blake. Banker's connection with oil plot exposed. Levings statement prepared by bank. Blake planned to defraud stockholders. Well, <laughs> I've got company. Well, you haven't any proof of this. Levings statement was written on bank stationery. That'll be proof enough for anyone. Besides, I don't think Mr. Levings wants to take all the blame alone. You bet your life I don't. Well, you can't print that. It'll go all over the country. I'll be absolutely ruined. 
I thought you'd feel that way about it. That's why I made you a member of the family. But of course, it's all up to Mr. Blake. What do you mean, it's up to me? I'm willing to kill these stories for a consideration. How, How much? much? <laughs> Not for money. This is an agreement not to open a John H. Smith store in Apex. And this is a bill of sale, transferring the advocate back to Webster. There's a check inside for what he owes you. It came out of Gertie Mellon's profits from the oil well. Now, you just sign those and we won't run the extra. Don't let him make a fool of you. Don't let him make a fool of you. All right, gentlemen. Luke Collins had instructions to start the press at 8.30 unless I telephone. The boys should be on the streets in 15 minutes. Why, you don't dare print that stuff. Let's wait 15 minutes and see. Extra! Extra! That's still the first extra. extra. You won't hear the second for 10 minutes. Now, look, Harry. To Harriet. be exact, 11 minutes and a half. You mind? Main 712. I'm just calling the office to see that everything's running all right. Hello, Luke. This is Jerry. Oh, you have? Yes, I can hear them running. Now, hold the line. Afraid you haven't much time, Mr. Blake. The press is running. Stop those presses. This is Martin Blake speaking. Never mind that, Luke. I'm running the advocate until tomorrow morning. Well? and kill everything. Go ahead with the regular morning run. Oh, yes. Will you tell Sam to wait? I'll be right over. We've got the advocate back again. Look at that. What is it? It's a bill of sale from Martin Blake. The paper's yours again. But, what is... It's a long story. I'll tell you after I get the paper ready to go to print. Say... And you'd better go in your office. You've got a caller in there. He's missed two trains already waiting for you. <gasps> it's Bryce. Mm -hmm. He stays. <laughs> Ain't you gonna hug me, too? Yeah, oh, you. Oh, darling. Everything's all right. Including my not going away? Oh, especially that. I've got a big job for you here on the paper. Does that by any chance include being a husband? Well, that's part of it. And the rest? Well, we'll go into that later. <laughs> <laughs> 